Livestock farming produces large amounts of organic waste, which is a great source of organic nutrients, but needs careful handling to prevent death and life-changing injury. Open slurry and our water tanks should be fenced to a height of 1.8 metres and secured, including locked gates to prevent access. It is essential that you check the weather for wind speed before planning slurry agitation. Only agitate on a breezy day, when there is a considerable air movement, as one lungful of hydrogen sulphide gas released during agitation can kill. Remember, evacuate, ventilate, agitate. Handling slurry is one of the most hazardous activities on a farm. The main risk associated with handling slurry is being overcome by slurry gases, leading to poisoning, suffocation or drowning. Machinery risks include impact or crushing when attaching the agitator or tanker and entanglement on the PTO. 6% of farm fatalities are due to drowning or suffocation. Agitation points to slatted tanks should be kept secure. Evacuate. Ensure that all livestock, people and pets are kept clear of the slatted shed when agitating. Make sure that buildings are well ventilated with all doors and outlets open. Stay away from the agitation point and out of the slatted shed for at least 30 minutes after starting agitation. Additional time must be given where there are linked tanks and linked buildings, A slurry gas, which is heavier than air, may travel into poorly ventilated locations within these sheds. Slurry gas can also travel through linked tanks and pipes to locations away from the tank. Check for and stay out of blind ends where slurry gas may build up. Indoor agitation points are very dangerous and should be avoided. There are a number of options for farmers to avoid the need to use indoor agitation points. These include extending tanks and the installation of outdoor agitating points, fitting a slurry circulation pipe, pumping slurry to an outdoor large capacity tank, installing a slurry aeration system and or the use of slurry additives. Slats should be checked regularly for evidence of sagging or cracks. Request an assessment by a slat manufacturer or engineer if concerns exist. Shock impacts from machinery can also result in slat failure. Never enter a slurry tank, even if empty, as gases may linger. Always request professional assistance. Noise reducing ear protection should be worn when agitating slurry and working close to the vacuum pump. Tight fitting clothing, appropriate gloves and footwear must also be worn. Always ensure that the PTO on the slurry tanker and agitator are completely guarded. Check that there is no damage or cracking on the guard and that the O guards, U guards and chains are all in place before operation. The manhole opening should be completely covered by the frame of the agitator. Remember, all covers and gates accessing tanks should be securely closed when not used. Use access holes in safety grids for pipes where present. Great care must be taken when operating large slurry tankers on public roads, on soft ground and especially on steep slopes or when sudden changes in direction are required. Loss of control and overturns are common with these machines. Only experienced operators should carry out the task. Care must be taken to ensure operators understand the movement of the slurry within the slurry tank and also the implications of associated sudden changes in weight distribution on stability. Trailing shoe or dribble bar attachments can also influence tanker weight distribution and stability. Care must also be taken to avoid contact with overhead power lines and ESB poles. Slurry pipes can operate at high pressure, especially on systems where slurry is pumped directly from the shed to the field or to other tanks. It is important that pipes are in good condition kept away from sharp objects, and that pressure is released before disconnection or working on blockages. Plan your slurry spreading and take all precautions to prevent deaths and injuries associated with slurry handling.